time for the TV pre-show. There is Byung, and there's Sky High to CJ Terrence. Definitely the favorite, uh, at least the, the more accomplished player is Byung here, but we're going to talk to Sky High first. So, have you seen Byung's play in the past? He's fully confident in TVT. Oh, uh, Byung's a good Terran player. I get pretty nervous. <laughs> Uh, Byung actually has a really strong TBT record. He definitely does, especially from his early times. So, how do you feel honestly? So they're asking about the score, uh, like specifically. 3-1 he thinks uh, he's going to advance, in his honest opinion. He says, like, if you ask me, I mean, 3-1, I think, for me. What's his weak point? He doesn't know. Oh, <laughs> 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 The X says the wrong things, like the actual opposite of reality,
Yeah, I mean, you can meet us if you come down to the studio. Yeah, come and say hi after the show as well. We'll come up if you want to take a picture with us or anything like that. Just come and say hi. Just come say hi. Don't you be know. shy. You don't you have know? to take a picture. It's fine. But you yeah. don't have to, but if you'd yeah. like to. If you want to, it's okay. Um, you know, we're, we're down. We're here to chat, you know. It's a, it's a good experience. You know, you travel all the way around the world. Well, if you're going to travel to Korea and you're going to come and watch GSO, I mean, you might as well do everything, sir. So. Do everything. I'm just saying, don't be shyly. If you're like, oh, I don't know if Wolf wants me to talk to him or not, just say hi. It's actually fine. Um, but yeah, I mean, you don't have to get my attention with a cheerful on, uh, on TV. You know? <laughs> indeed, indeed. Well, going into today's, oh, the last match of today, Sky High versus Byung. Pretty interesting interview, but they are obviously teammates and friends. And I, I'm kind of assuming Sky High is the the Hyung, the the big brother. The way he was acting, like he's like just unimpressed with, yeah. <laughs> with everything Byung was saying. Yeah, uh, I mean, Sky High, like Byung said, doesn't have that much results. And StarCraft mm. 2 was like the darkest horse in the tournament. Here are our maps, by the way. Uh, let's talk about this actually really quick. Deadwing, Merry-Go-Round, Nimbus, Foxtrot Labs, and then Catalina. Okay. So uh, starting things off with a big map. Um, but going back to what I was saying, you know, in StarCraft 1, though, uh, he's definitely the bigger name, the mm. one who has the more success. The, you know, Brood War ma fans will remember this guy, and mm. I'm sure a lot of them are tuning in right now saying, wow, this guy is back. He's, he's actually back. possibly going to make it to the round of four he's in a big playing tournament. He's fantastic. He beat Flash. Like, doesn't get crazier than that. And, um, yeah, I mean, he's looking very poised to, to do very well in this, in this best of five as well. It's just another great Terran player to put on CJ's lineup for Pro League next year as well. Mm. I mean, this guy is looking really good. And if Terran is rising back to power, back to form, we might have something opposite of what we saw last Pro League when we see a lot of TVTs that could become more important. Um, just going forward, just talking about CJ as a team. Mm. Uh, but you could see that in that interview, this guy seems more confident. He seems like he's kind of here to win it, you know, sit down and, and win the games. Whereas even though Byung acted like, he, you know, he said things like he wasn't, uh, nervous. He seemed a bit nervous. He seemed very nervous, and Sky High seemed completely in control. And uh, I, I actually it's be would. Exciting. I would never, you know, have imagined myself to say these words, but I kind of favor Sky High myself coming into this. Well, I mean, he, he two head flash like he did. Uh, I think I think it's a very good chance that he made it look easy too. He made really great choices. He even beat Flash in Mech vs Mech very convincingly on that second map. And you know what? This map. Also, is going to be a, a pretty, you, know, you can go mech pretty easily on this map. Deadwing, that is. Yeah, I mean, it, it's a big map. Early attacks, early seats tank pushes, even early heli and aggression is going to take a long time to get across the map. If you're not vertical spawns, Banshee harass, you got to fly all the way across the map diagonally. It's going to take a long time. So spawning locations are going to change a lot of how the openers work on this map. And if you go for a gas first, you're not going to know where your opponent spawns before you make that gas first. So yeah. a bit of a gamble. Yeah, and it, it, there is like four bases in every corner, so it's very, very easy to hold down four bases, go to that giant mech death ball. Uh, yeah, it's a perfect map for mech, really. I love TBT, by the way, Moonglade. I think it's my favorite matchup to cast. I love it when it's not gas first, first gas first. Then oh, that one gets a bit silly. Then it's just silly, but besides that, if it, if it goes to the late game, which we will most likely see on this map, it is fantastic. Yeah, it's so much fun. It's like a lightning fast chess game that just is all about positioning, drops, quick movements, and reaction time. It's almost entirely about positioning. Yeah. Here's Byung, the younger of the two, the uh, also teammate. Has done very well against Protoss so far, beating Parting and Zest 2 0 which is absolutely insane. Look at his record versus Terran. He's 8 and 1 that in is 2014. That's insane. Wow. He's quite possibly the best Terran versus Terran player this year in the world because we don't see a lot of TBT. To, to see that many TBTs and have an 8 and 1 record, possibly best TBT it, when it comes to stats. Well, it makes sense why Sky High is also so good at the matchup when he's got a practice partner like this. Just, just completely destroys Flash. Uh, I mean, it, it all starts to make sense, Wolf. Yes, it does. Very well said. Good assessment here. So, this really could go either way, but just looking at how well Sky High played against Flash and the fact that he was also preparing TVT for that group, whereas Byung only played two Protosses, I want to give him a slight edge here. He also looks much more confident. He does, and you know what? It is, it is his time. It is this kind of tournament where all the... Uh, the underdogs, the uh, the players that have disappeared for a very long time, have not really achieved anything, come out and start beating everyone. So I think it, I think this could be his time. And neither of these players have had a big StarCraft II tournament win. You know, but uh, this is a really big proving grounds for both of these players. 
to actually make it to the round of four would be huge for Sky High. To make it to the finals and win the finals would be, for Bill, it feels like for him, I guess he'd probably think it's about time, right? I've been playing this game for a while now. I've always been a great Terran. I looked really good in Pro League, but in individual leagues, I haven't had my moment yet. Could very well be this time. Up against his teammate here. They know each other inside and out, no doubt about that. I'm really curious to see how they're going to open on Dead Wing. A lot of different possibilities. Let's find out right now. Game number one. Sky High versus Byung, teammates here in the round of eight. The top left in red, the Brood War hero, back now in StarCraft II. CJ and two Sky High. It's going to be that vertical spawns. Yeah. Drop play can come into uh, can do a lot of work on this map in these positions as well as Banshee. Absolutely. Can be a very aggressive game. Certainly could be. Are they fake glasses? Oh, uh, yeah. Actually, I think you're right. The bottom left, in blue, is teammate. CJ into Spion. Not a fan of fake glasses, Wolf. There's, well, there's some real ones. There's some real ones. The thing about it is, uh, as far as I can remember, Sky has always worn glasses, so maybe if he got surgery, he just wanted to keep his style, actually. Uh. Uh, so people could recognize him easier. Mm. We're going to have a gas first for both players. Well, how about that? I know it's your favorite. It's my favorite kind of TVT. I mean, it's going to be very explosive. Can end very, very quickly as well. And it is the best choice considering the positions as well. I mean, they can fly just directly to each other's main base. Yeah, I was wondering bottom. if we were going to see a Reaper expand out of one of these players just because of how valuable the scout is. And it's a four-player map where it could be cross or you could be vertical. Mm. Um, essentially, it's a three-player map if you really want to think about it technically. Um, yeah. yeah. But it's, it's a map where... If you can get that early information and then know that your cross spawns, for example, and that Banshee harassment won't be as good, uh, you could play a safer game. But it looks like these two just want to go straight down the path of aggression. Straight there. We saw a couple of stats in the bottom here. They haven't played in quite some time in the competitive circuit outside of their practice. Yeah. You could see that uh, Sky has actually ended up playing a decent amount of TBTs as well. Uh, in sets, he's played nine, six, and three. Byung, on the other hand, is 14 and, and four, but eight and one in series, and that is, again, insane. Absolutely ridiculous, actually. All right, let's see when those second gases get taken. So far, identical in builds. Yep, you could draw a line of symmetry down that production tab. <laughs> you really could. Okay, a Reaper first for Byung. Well, it's going to give him a much more of a scouting advantage if he can get up that ramp into the main and see exactly what Sky High will be planning with his tech on this gas first build. Yeah. Second and refinery also added for Byung. Yeah, Sky High is, is keeping it on one gas right now. So, see how he wants to play this one. Almost makes me feel like he wants to do a drop instead of Banshees, because, you know. A little bit more gas for that. Yeah, it would make sense to be more of a drop, uh, whereas we should be seeing Banshees from Byung. With that second gas, I mean, Cloak Banshees would be the thing that makes the most sense with that much gas. Yeah. And we're seeing a first Hellion being made for Sky High as well. Yep, I mean, they're both just going down that path, getting those Hellions out, getting a little bit of extra vision. A little bit faster here for Byung saying across the map rather than using it defensively. Yeah, this Reaper is not really going to find anything here. Yeah, good split there on those Marines. On this map, it's tough to, to jump in, actually. Those are basically the only places you can. Mm. Okay, we're going to start with the Viking. Yep. And Four there's Byung. that drop for Sky High that I was talking about because he didn't take that second gas. So it's going to be like a, a Viking into Banshee, it seems, for Byung here. And Viking's going to help out a lot once this drop comes into play. But will he have enough on the ground to really clean this up is another question. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, the Viking can help zone, certainly. Yeah, and it'll help prevent escapes. So that Marine drop with, uh, with kind of like the Hellion run by up the ramp. Yeah, we've kind of seen this used a lot in TVT, but also in TVP. Uh, you just have so much flexibility with this. And we're going to see a Raven even fall up instead of the Banshee. Okay. Doesn't necessarily mean he's not going to add Banshees later, but going Raven first. 
just playing really safely. The Viking into Raven is like as safe as it gets, right? <laughs> super, super safe here. And the Widowmine is also at oh. just in time. He's going to elevate her in, actually. He's going to go for dropping those and then going back to get the Hellions, hiding these units in the last second. This could do so much damage, actually. I mean, yeah, with I think that Widowmine, completely out of position. There's only three Hellions and a Marine there. Okay, here we go. Hellion's going right for that mineral line. He's got the Marines to buffer as well. That Viking might just want to go ahead and land. Widomine's coming in here. He is going to just try to target down that medevac. SCV is getting involved as well. Widomine burrows. And you know what? I think he's going to end up defending this quite, quite okay. It's no target on the way. SCVs. So far, we've, we've seen six SCVs go down there. I mean, while this is all happening, still six SCVs. That isn't too bad. Oh, but meanwhile, Counter Reaper gets one kill. Oh, but we'll get surrounded. two. We'll get three. I don't think he should. He should pull that SCP back. No, okay. just in time. It's okay. You got a couple more kills to kind of even things up here. I really expected that drop to do a lot more damage. A pretty too. solid defense there. I guess the, the choice to not land the Viking was ended up being the better one because it prevented the retreat. It was a pretty awkward angle he was fighting from. Maybe he should have used those Hellions to, to do a bit more SCV damage perhaps. I'm not sure because he, he was not going to win that fight army versus army. Especially not with the Raven and the auto turret. Yeah, that's just not going to happen. Well, two more Vikings come over here. He's going to try to eliminate the, perhaps the Raven. Anything he can find. Let's Maybe find get some scouting off. Yeah. Damage a barracks, you know. Seize the second CC, which is probably the most important thing. Be Pretty be safe to assume that was going to be out there. Yeah. I want to fly into that wood of mine. <laughs> Don't think he will, but just something to be uh, concerned about. What's cool about this scout is he knows now, uh, this is for Skyhead that is to say, is he knows, okay, well, my CC is on the low ground. I'm already going to start mining from two bases while you're not. So I'm going to have better saturation. Even though your CC uh, is done first, your mules are going to be a little bit faster. Mm. And we're going to see we're going to see Beyond go into mech from here. And we're going to see the the marine tank sort of uh, transition is what Skyhead likes to do. We saw him do this, uh, I believe it was first game against Flash. He did it very, very well. And Flash was also going mech on that matchup. Yeah. Third CC comes up for Sky High as Ooh. well. A bit greedy. This is this is essentially what you have to do against Mech, though. Like you have to, if you're going to be going bio like this, which I believe we are seeing Sky High do, though we haven't seen any uh, bio upgrades just yet. He does have a tech lab on one of his uh, barracks. I'm not so sure. Uh, yeah, he's starting a marine now. Hmm. Um, perhaps just to get that bunker filled though at the natural. I don't know if we're going to necessarily see bio out of this guy. Uh, I think he just wants to to play a little bit of a slower build up with the CC and go into an eco first uh, mech, whereas the mech that we're seeing from Byung is going to be like blue flame aggression into mm. a fa into a, a third economy. So a little bit faster attack, slower economy. Ooh, nice. And he wants right into siege tanks. Yeah, yeah, you could be right there, Wolf. Uh, we are seeing a reactor added to that barracks. No, no uh, bio upgrades. So yeah, slower transition into mech, but with more greed. I, I kind of like this, especially on this map. I mean, all you, ha all you need is really a buffer for the tanks, and you kind of can secure three bases pretty easily. Well, let's talk about this, because what's cool about this build from Sky High is that he's got a Viking fleet. So against drops, he's probably going to be way more than okay. Mm. Against attacks at the front, he rushed out just enough siege tanks and enough marines to put a bunker filled. So he knows he doesn't have to worry about anything. Yeah, his, his army's going to be a little smaller at first, but his economy's going to get ahead as a result. He's even using this barracks to continue to make uh, add-ons. Got to yeah. be careful here, though. Yeah, he does. Ooh, very nice. Two-point defense turns, and I think it seems that Young kind of got the jump on him, so he will win the fight for now. I don't think he's going to really find much more damage. There's this Banshee is killing a little bit. Yeah, killing that barracks would be annoying because he hasn't added any more factories yet, actually. That's kind of a concern. Yeah. He should be okay with, when it comes to this there. Yeah, he's got enough repairing SCVs to even deal with the auto turret here. And we'll ward this off. Very nicely done there. Economic-wise, uh, you can see that Sky has pulled a little bit ahead in SCVs. He's got a little bit more mining with the mules. But the third base, again here, this time for Byung, is going to be put on the low ground first. It's already over there at the third base location. He can start mining from it in just a second when it's finished. And Bit he's already got the better you know, production built up as well. Mm. Bit of a worry also for, uh, for Sky High here is even though he doesn't have those extra factories and he does not have any upgrades going. And we already see plus one almost finished for Byung at this point. Yeah, it's like he's got he's going all about the money, but uh, eventually he's going to have to make units because now Byung is going into even more factories. Up to five facts here, so yeah, he's going to be he's going to be he's going to have all the production he'll ever want on three base. 
Scan goes down and he's like, what? He's <laughs> like, huh, okay, uh, you're missing a couple of factories there, buddy. Yeah. I wonder if he's... I almost wonder if he's going to go into some crazy sky Terran or something. It's He's got to add those factories pretty soon, right? Mm, well, we don't see any extra starports just yet. So yeah, I, he's not I, adding either. I think he's just really committed to making a decent Viking count to kind of control the air. And if you control the air in TVT, you, you're obviously going to have quite the advantage when it comes to the tank wars, tank positioning, etc. Yeah. Well, I mean, two different approaches to essentially the same end. Uh, I just wonder how much better is it really to have that third CC that you're not using for a while because in TBT and especially in mech TBT, uh, am I wrong or isn't gas the most important thing? Having a third CC that drops extra mules for you and builds a faster SCV count that's only mining minerals doesn't really matter that much. If your opponent gets his gases up at the same time as your third CC, you're not really that ahead from having that faster third CC, are you? Because you're not getting any extra gas from it just yet. Yeah. So it doesn't it doesn't work out as much to give him a huge advantage as you might think. And already we could see a pretty massive supply lead here from that extra production that Byung had early and the fact that he got his third CC up with the gases about the same time. We are seeing a bit of a Viking advantage uh, for Sky High though because he did get those minerals earlier and, and obviously Vikings cost more minerals than true, gas. True, true. That's a very good point actually. I'm glad you bring that up. So... That's one sort of a redeeming factor of this. We are seeing no fourth base just yet, despite the fact that Sky High has kind of cut off and is pretty much well prepared to defend anything on those pretty much all four bases. I want to see the unit count, uh, because I want to adjust how ahead he is of Vikings. It's clear he's ahead, so much so that his opponent's even making a Thor right now, although Sky High adds two Thors of his own. It should be, uh, I think he's at least two ahead at every every point. Yeah. Um, but now he's making two medivacs, so... Maybe he's pretty much on even terms at this point. Yeah, it's 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 ending up kind of evening out for both of these two. Small lead still uh, in total supply for Byung, and notably an army as well. You guys can see the top right. Faster fourth CC uh, again here for Sky High. He always makes his CCs first. But I would imagine if Byung's about to add one, he's probably just going to make it at his own base. And like you said from the very beginning, Moonglade, this is a map where taking four bases is so easy. You can see, if you look at these two players' bases, respectively, they've both got one spot to put that CC. Easy to defend, easy to straight up add that in. A whole set of upgrades, again, still ahead right now for Byung. He starts his plus three the same time that Sky High starts his plus two. Yeah, so quite the advantage there. And we're going to see a bit of an assault on this third base. And, and this ooh, drop very is dead, man. Very important scout there. He should have his tanks in position for it and his Vikings as well. We're going to have to get a look at these Viking counts. It seems to be that Byung has two Vikings ahead, as well as has a Thor out. Good position on these siege tanks on the high ground as well. Forcing scans. He's got his Vikings in the more favorable position. But uh, not, in, not in range to kill the, the ref refinery, it seems. Yeah which is pretty much the most important thing about this base right now, considering how much minerals Sky High has. Looks like we are going to see a counterattack with Hellions, which can do something. Yeah, he's got Vikings to support those as well. Ooh, a nice drop. This is a lot of damage potential here. Okay. Not going to want to do too much here. I actually can't Ooh. believe he's landing those Vikings. Wow, this is really ambitious. I, didn't I know. don't know about this one. He's going to completely lose out on the uh, the sky battle now because he just traded all his Vikings. He killed a few siege tanks for it, but was it worth it? No. I don't Not think at so. All. Not at all, <laughs> Wolf. That was, that was a bit of a blunder in my opinion. And these Vikings almost went down too. I mean, they were a shot or two away from Hellions from actually dying. He would like, have even lost more. Why would you give up your air, your air army in for this sort like of situation? like three tanks? Yeah, and now you, you quite could possibly lose a lot more tanks here. Very open position here. They are only Hellions, so they can't do too much. Well, he's going to go and land his Vikings to engage this because he knows that it doesn't actually matter for air control at this moment for the fight, but he is going to get crushed here. Oh. Vikings to the tanking, Sea tanks to the back are going to wipe this army, and this will likely actually end the game because he could just continue to push his advantage. Yeah. He has that upgrade lead still here, and he could pretty much just walk through this while he's helping the tank. Those. Yeah, there's nothing left here. And a very, very weird, wonky first game by Sky High. Some very, very questionable decisions, especially with his Vikings. Yeah, I mean, it was literally like in the, before he landed, I was in the middle of saying, like, there's no way he's going to land those, right? There's just no way. Man. I am baffled, Wolf. I have no idea what's going <laughs> on here. So another drop coming in here actually looks like a double drop. Could do some more economic damage. 
This well, base is toast. Yeah, every every base is toast from here on out. He's down 20 supply, and he's, he's got such a perfect position with these tanks that there's no way he's going to really engage into this. The only thing that's really uh, redeeming is the fact that he, he did use up all his Vikings. Well, both players have essentially been fighting on the ground. Well, the ground army is waste armor for Bjorn. He oh. drops Manor Mules. There's that drop, but it's too G -G. little too late. G -G. Young dominates game one. Uh, I feel like Young wasn't ahead until we saw Sky High throw away his Vikings and Hellions in that counterattack that did nothing. And the fact that he didn't really need to do that counterattack at all. It's not like his base was getting destroyed. It was simply some of the minerals could not be mined because of the tanks. Yeah. So it was super weird. Super weird decision making there. I, I, I can't I can't myself understand it. I, I keep trying to find like the devil, because devil's advocate here to be like, well, think about this, but I'm just not seeing it. Three tanks for all your air control, never worth it. It, it, it kind of feels like he just gave up on the air war. He's like, okay, I'm uh, I, I've traded too much for something, and I was like, I I'll probably lose it, so I should just give it up. There are certain situations when you want to land your Vikings when you're attacking, like what we saw Young do when he counterattacked. It was like it was a like, guaranteed win. Yeah, it's a guaranteed win, and that's when you can use your Vikings like this, but. You never want to try to like snipe sea tanks and lift and get away. I think he was like, I can kill them really fast and then pick up. No, not without armor upgrades on those Vikings. No, you can't. <laughs> yeah. Even with armor upgrades, I still don't think it would have been good, but uh, bad decision making there. Hellions uh, had plus two, maybe even plus three at that moment. I think it was still plus two, but it's a lot of damage and they're all doing AOE damage to all the Vikings as well. Plus the tank damage before they died. Yeah. Well, let's try to get that game yeah, going in game on. two. Merry-go-round is going to be the map. Another map where we see a lot of gas first. Very aggressive map, very open map. Third base is extremely exposed. Yep, another map. Three spawning locations possible. Let's jump into it right now. Top left in the red. He is... CJ and Toost Sky High. Kind of, uh, if you want to think about it this way, I guess you could say almost identical spawns to the last game. Yeah. Positioned very similar. Very true, Wolf. Although on this map, there's no cross spawn, so it doesn't matter as much at all. To the bottom, center, in Teal, his teammate, yeah. up one game. CJ into Spion. Both playing a very solid first game, just in the mid game, just very questionable decisions from Sky High. Up until then, I, I thought it was very equal. I liked some of his decisions. Um, the late factory decision kind of started to make sense a little bit more once once you actually mentioned the, the Vikings needing more minerals and the extra mules that go into that and taking that early air control. He didn't have like a massive lead when it came to air control, but it was significant. It was it was like enough for now, but then he, he, he invested into Medivax and then he like just decided to do a counterattack on the third base, which I mean if there was no units there it would have done a lot of work, but there was everything that needed to be there to kind of counter it. And he even had Vikings over the army to like see exactly what was there, and he still decided to commit. And then he lost everything. And from there, it's just such an awkward position because you have no air control, and you're just, you're just so behind and army-wise. Yeah, a bit, a bit questionable for sure. Questionable there. Uh. I would question it every time, Wolf. So, as it is in this game, we have a gas first for Sky High. A little bit more of a normal gas timing for Byung, but as you can see, it's only about, you know, 32 gas difference here. Yeah. Uh, it's it's not it's, it's not the the biggest op yeah it's not the biggest difference. It's just going to be a Reaper versus a factory. So yeah, most likely going to be that uh, Reaper expand that we always see, and you are going to get that early scout off. You will see that it will be it will be gas first. Sometimes you can get a little bit of damage done with the Reaper as well with the gas first out of your opponent because he doesn't have too many units out. Sometimes you can pick off a Marine um, if they're if they're too spread because they're trying to cover all angles. Hmm. Um, Probably not going to be a ton of damage, Tom, but there's potential for that. But it's really important to see that early factory. It is. It really get, it tells you everything you need to know. You're like, okay, it's going to be some early aggression, no doubt about that. I have to be prepared for a drop or a banshee. I got to get something out to defend against this, or I will just lose the game. And we do see games end very, very early when there's a gas first involved in TBT. Last game was a special case with both players deciding to go for mech after failed aggression early on. Yeah. Okay, well, he runs right into both Marines, in Ooh. fact. Nothing sneaky about that Reaper. He walked right in the front door. Yeah, he might want to heal up and then go through the left side, jump up the cliff there. Yeah, he's probably going to be a bit hesitant, in fact, because now it's almost like certain the Reaper will die. So it means the Reaper really accomplished nothing. 
Uh, well, I guess he could tell the marine count is low enough to where it's probably going to be a factory, but he hasn't seen it for sure. Hmm. Is this going to be that fast Banshee by the looks of it this time? I don't think it will be a Raven this time. You know what? I think so too, especially considering that he's seen the Reaper already. Mm -hmm. Because that means he knows his opponent's factory is late, so his opponent's not going to have a Raven. And his opponent's not going to have a Viking out early because his opponent's starport is late. So I think when you see a Reaper like this, you think, okay, definitely going down the cloak path. And there it is. And a later, much, much later stop hood for Byung after that CC. So sad for Byung here because he showed his hand with the Reaper, showing that his factory is going to be late and didn't even get to scout his opponent. Well, I guess he, he, he always had now. a plan, yeah. Oh, he oh. sees everything. He sees even Cloak being upgraded. Oh, perfect kind of tell there. And instantly, Engineering Bay goes down. It looks like he will be trying to get a Viking out in time. I really respect that decision to sack like that, though. It's just so important in this matchup to know what you're up against. And if you're not sure, you might get caught off guard. But what is the Reaper going to do really in the mid game or when a drop comes out? Exactly. It's really not going to do much. No, exactly. And, ooh, Banshee's actually gone complete. pretty much the wrong way. Yeah, because he didn't scout. Now he sees and now he's going to go the right way. But His hearts are going to be out in time as well. Just about actually. Widowmines too, mm. if he's not careful. Young, you're posturing very, very well. He's going to have the economic lead and I, I dare say Sky High will not find much damage with this Banshee. I don't think so. There's even a safety turret on top of the barracks to prevent, uh, you know, any sort of extra economic damage, or at the production, I should say. Yeah. Um, so Very now we could cool. just make this essentially useless. We'll get a marine or two, but besides that, it's going to be hard pressed to find any extra damage here. Mm. Oh, and then that widow mine as well. Some cheeky widow mines. Going to be looking for anything that come out in the map. Most likely going to be those uh, hellions. We see something moving across the map for Sky High. Obviously needs to do a little bit of damage here because he is quite behind with economy. Has not found any sort of damage with the Banshee. Looks like he will be investing quite a lot in this aggression. Oh, finds a little sweet spot here though. Oh, Ouch. huge And hit. the second one. Oh no, oh nearly. These Marines could actually take the brunt of that second one. And this could just completely end the game for this aggression. Yeah, well, uh, okay, oh, it's right. already on cooldown. I, I didn't, didn't realize. Something already. Damn it. That could have been something special. This tank Still. actually is going to be a problem. We need to have a look at exactly what we see from Byung here. He doesn't have too much. He's going to have to pull some SCVs, probably. If he lets that tank see jump, he's going to be in a bit of trouble. And the SCVs actually don't surround the tank, they fight Marines. Oh, uh, maybe there's not a scan. Uh-oh, this is getting uh, a bit out of control. Oh, oh but the tart finishes the job. He can actually come out again once there's some more SCVs. This uh, Banshee over here, meanwhile, not quite in range to do what it wants. There it goes, there's the target. But this is, CC has to lift. Widowmine's still on cooldown. And this is this natural is totally no longer under the control of Young. I been, think he can take it back pretty quick because he does have Hellbats now. Second tank arrives. Ooh, second tank will make this a little bit trickier there. The CC is finishing up back at home for Sky High, so it's not like it's two base versus one. Oh, here we one go. Versus one. He should break this. Yeah. He's got his own Banshee out as well. Well, don't be so sure. I mean, there's, the Marines are tanking the Hellbats very, very well for the tanks to kind of finish everything off. This Banshee, there's, there's not enough... Uh, oh, it's, there's too many Marines for it to really kill the tank. And it doesn't have Cloak. This Banshee's getting more and more damage done at home as well. Perhaps I spoke too soon, Moonglade. I think you might have, Wolf. It seems like uh, we really see Sky Eye holding on to this, uh, this advantage. Oh, Banshee actually picks off the tank. So important. Yeah, this, it, when you have uh, a Banshee, it can kill almost infinity unstemmed Marines if it's micro perfectly. And of course, siege tanks that aren't moving when the Marines run too far back, you can just start doing damage to that. But still, oh, a pretty tough spot. Oh god, he's going to no. eat it. Ouch. Ooh, yuck. One more shot from a Banshee will deal the, the finishing blow there. But I still think Sky High took the, a huge advantage from that. And if he maintains that tank, it's going to help out a lot in defending against anything that Bjorn can actually do to him. Yeah, a repair would be nice. Continuing to get more SCP damage. This is the big problem. This one Banshee is just continuing to be annoying. Always a Banshee back there doing damage. He's 36 to 21 Harvesters. Uh-oh. Repair on the Siege Tank. And I see the idea here. I saw the idea. I mean, the Marines were very lined up, and it was a great kind of counterattack, but still not enough. And we see a hefty supply lead of 23 for Sky High this early on. I mean, he, he saw the Marines were all, like, red, red, like, red dead. And one shot would have one-shot all of them in a line if he could have just gotten in there. But it would have been beautiful. He just, he just couldn't quite get in there, and then he loses more Hellions. Mm -hmm. 
The Zabanti is still trying to find another opportunity. He's actually going to pick off a building SCV. Another SCV goes down as well. Can he get three? Yep. Uh, looks like it is going to be a bit of a suicide run for this Banshee. Going to try and get as much more as he can. Sits on three. Good choice. I mean, he knows he's out of cloak and he's not going to escape from the Vikings. Might as well try to get what he can before he goes down. Mm. And looks like we are going to see the same kind of build from Sky High. I think he will be going to Mech once again. We do see that tech lab on the barracks, but it's simply not being used. And more and more Vikings being added. So Sky High going for that air control early on again. Hopefully he doesn't land on this time. Oh, but look, he oh, gets stim this okay. time. Or maybe he wants to show it to a scan. He's going to cancel it, but... Well... He already has the engineering bay, yeah. and down goes more uh, racks, so I guess he can make good use of it. But still taking the same approach uh, with the early 3rd CC. Early 3rd CC and the Viking count as well. He wants to maintain that air control for as long as possible. He's while actually got a lot of Marines still out here too. Yeah, and, and Byung is going for the same same build as last game, going for back into that tech. Big uh, sorry, blue back flame. Back into that mech, not tech. Ooh. Tech oh, into mech. Like what you did there. Yeah. Big blue flame commitment. It's got five Hellions out right now. Scan goes down here. It's going to be tough to attack into this. Well, there Although. is no tanks. There is no tanks. And he has the air control, which is so important. And he had to burn that uh, that point defense drone very, very early. Yeah. The Banshees are so critical in the defense here for Byung. And if he can't maintain air control, if he loses that... He's going to have to lift his racks before it finishes orbital. Yep. You're right. It, if he can't actually hold air control oh, here... Oh, what's it? it? So much damage. Luckily, we got to look at that. But he, if, he, if he can't actually control the air, he can't use his Banshees. If he can't use his Banshees, those Siege Tanks are uncontested. Oh, he can't actually use anything. Look at this. Yeah. The, he's getting completely zoned out. Two yeah. Hellbat Drap is going to be a bit annoying, but he'll eventually be able to clean that up. Not nearly as important as the natural base. Yeah. It's actually about to go down. He's going to target the Siege Tank on the high ground first. And this is a lot of damage done at home, but it's just insignificant in comparison. I mean, he can't. He doesn't really want to lose every no, SCV here. No, definitely does not want to lose those. Uh -oh. He's too. He's too. Uh, oh, GG. GG. All right. Yeah, fair enough. I mean, that drop was doing a bit of work, but when you're losing a natural for it, just doesn't doesn't add up. He couldn't get control of the air, and that's that's part of why that early air control matters so much. We harped on it a lot in the first game. It didn't really come into play because Sky just kind of threw all of his Vikings away. Really get to see how important air control is, but in this game. You can just see that the only hope Young had of defending that heavy siege tank marine push was his Banshees, but if he can't get his Banshees close enough, it just doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. So I love this song, by the way, Will. <laughs> we have to mention it every time. Uh, you know, some kids think uh, playing TVT without air control is actually safe. Uh, but well, the reality is... The reality is you can't go mech without the air control. You see exactly what happens, especially if you're going to go for Banshees really early on like that. Uh, Sky, Sky High was very, very smart to go Vikings like he like he did. And I wish he did it more. Uh, he kind of kept them like he did uh, for game one. I think yeah. the game one would have changed a lot. Both games, we saw Byung really commit a lot to Blue Flame. Mm. He got Blue Flame really early. And mm. it didn't really come into play for him either time. Like... Yeah, he had those two Hellbats in the main killing a lot of SCVs, but they would have actually done almost the same if they didn't even have Blue Flame. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's kind of where he sort of put his focus rather on the air control um, and then didn't expect an attack to come that early. Well, we kind of saw the same thing in Game 1 where we did see two Medivacs being uh, invested in for Sky High. He started doing the drops, and then it just didn't work out, and he fell behind in, in air control, and then he just gave up air control. Yeah. So it was, it was weird decision-making from both. But, I mean, yeah, it was really, really nicely done from, uh, from Sky High Game 2. Well, guys, it's all tied up now. It's 1-1. One, one. Before we go into that third game, decide who's going to take the lead. We're going to take a quick commercial break. We'll be right back.